This is an overdrive that I built. It's a clone of the Barefoot FX Honeybee. I built this with a PC board that I bought from Aeon Electronics called the Procyon. This is a great sounding project and the PC board comes with excellent documentation. I started by inserting all the resistors and soldering them in order. I did them in groups of three. I made a couple part substitutions along the way. One of the parts, R13, was listed as 51 ohms, and I didn't have one of those, so I used a 47 ohm resistor in its place. R14 and 15 are listed as 31.6K, but that's such a weird size, I just substituted two 33K resistors. Footnote number three suggests using a 4.7K ohm resistor in place of RX1 and a 220N cap for C5. I used this mod in my build. After soldering all the resistors, I soldered the diodes. All the diodes have a stripe on one side, and this should match up with the stripe on the circuit board. The parts need to be inserted in the correct orientation. The electrolytic capacitors have a positive and negative leg. They need to be inserted correctly. The um, negative leg has a stripe on the side and the leg is shorter. It has a longer leg on the positive lead and the circuit board shows a plus sign where the positive lead goes in and usually that pad is square. The parts list shows C6 and C11 as film caps. I, I don't believe that the film caps sound any different myself or they don't make a difference that I can hear, so I just use ceramic caps that I had on hand for these two parts. The original uses a 2N5952 transistor for Q1. The build document suggests using a 2N5457 as a substitute. These are easier and more common, or at least I have more of them in my parts bin, so I used one of these. If you're using the 2N5457, you'll need to insert it backwards because the pinout is opposite to the 5952 part. Since the transistors are really difficult to remove, I double-checked the pinout to confirm that it was correct, and then I soldered the part in opposite to what is shown on the circuit board. The LEDs are also polarized. The, um, the LED itself has a flat side and the circuit board um, shows a flat side also, so make sure to line those up correctly. I used a socket for IC1. Be sure to align the notch on the chip with the notch on the circuit board. If you solder the chip directly to the board, uh, be sure to put it in the correct orientation. It's really impossible to remove these if you make a mistake. With the circuit board complete, I needed a box. I used a 1590B sized box. These are common, you can get them anywhere, and they're the size of those classic MXR effects. Drill the box, print out the drilling guide from the documentation, cut it out, and then wrap it around the box and tape it to the box, and then this will show you where you need to drill. With the drilling guide in place, I collected all the parts I need so I could use them to size up the drill bits that I'd use to create the holes. Pots mount to the circuit board. This makes for a very clean and easy build. Before soldering the pots, I placed them in the circuit board in the correct location and then flipped it over and inserted them into the box. And then I put nuts on the outside, flipped the box back over, and then I soldered the legs of the pots in place. I did it this way because I think it puts less stress on the pots and it makes sure everything lines up before you solder it. The last 
step was to wire everything together. So to do this, I followed the wiring diagram in the documentation and, you know, measured out lengths of wire and then wired each thing up one by one, checking it against the documentation. I did it all with everything inside the box. It was a little like building a ship in a bottle, but it's not hard to do if you're careful and you have a soldering iron with a pointy tip. With everything wired up, I just needed to add some knobs. The last step was to decorate the box. I used some stays on ink. This ink sticks to anything and it's pretty permanent. Um, and then I just used some rubber stamps and it was quick and easy to um, put some, some labels on the knobs and put some art on the box so I could tell which effect this was. All of the guitars in the backing track were recorded with the Honey Drive into GarageBand. Hey, thanks for watching.